Hey everyone, welcome back. In the previous episode, we took a look at the cookie, at the ID token and the access token, and the claims on our client, as well as how to juggle claims between our ID token and the claims on our client, and the claims in the access token. And we learned about how configuring identity resources and API resources can help us retrieve extra claims. Now in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the refresh token. So first of all, what I would like to do is take a look at the specification, which basically we took a look at a brief moment in the previous episode, but in this episode, I'm gonna go into section 3.3 and here where it said that the refresh token is optional. The way that you request a refresh token and the open ID connect spec is we have to go to point 11 and it's the offline access section. And this section essentially says that we have to specify an offline access scope in order to get the refresh token. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see how we do this in identity server because in identity server, we have to take one extra step. First of all, let's go ahead and do what it asks us to is we're going to add a offline access scope, right? So uh, we can go ahead into the startup and here where we are configuring scopes, let's go ahead and just copy the name here and paste it here right so we're requesting offline access and another thing for identity server to allow this is you have to say uh, allow offline access and you say true okay and if we go ahead and start this up and we go into home secret bob password uh, i'll remove this breakpoint in the secret controller and here now i will also remove these claims since we already know pretty much everything about these claims and we'll take a look at the refresh token you can see that the refresh token isn't a jwt token as i mentioned in the refresh token episode when we first sort of uh, appeared at the concept of a refresh token this is just some random value that's generated and is stored on the identity server and then it can be used to exchange for an access token okay so now, uh, since we have a refresh token and we have set up some infrastructure in our client in the, in the auth uh, arc where we have set up uh, a refresh access token function, let's go ahead and take a look at how we would implement this using identity server, right? So let's go ahead, uh, grab the whole function. We will paste it at the bottom here. And we're going to step through this one by one, dissecting how we would tackle this using identity server. So the first thing to uh, realize and sort of understand is if we go into API 2 and controller, if you still remember, if you haven't watched this video, what identity model package provides us with is uh, these uh, convenient methods uh, that allow us to request certain things, right? So these are predefined objects that already contain all the information and all the mechanisms, right? So client credential token request, we're gonna be using something similar, but let's go ahead, if you are kind of lost, use this as a reference of what I'm sort of trying to do, right? So first of all, I wanna get the discovery document and let's go ahead and see which part this replaced. So this is the part where I copied the code from, so I'm going to close that and home controller. So at the top here, you can see MVC client if you can't see it, sorry. But essentially, I'm on the MVC client refresh access token function. Cool. We have the refresh token, and this is pretty much the beginning part. We now want to take this refresh token and send it to the token endpoint, the same thing that we did in our auth arc. To know the token endpoint, we need to get the discovery document. So first of all, let's go ahead and create a, a server client. Uh, so HTTP client factory, create client. And here we can pass in, paste in this discovery document, uh, server client await, and uh, we're gonna wait on some address. This is preferably to be stored somewhere in your configuration. But here I can go ahead, uh, alt enter on my identity server and the debug uh, section i can copy the url here and i can paste it here right but it was pretty much the same so we will leave it at that 
uh, let's close that home controller. So at this point, we have a discovery document. What this helps us to do is to discover the token endpoint. This is where we are going to be sending the request. So this is going to be fulfilling the address field. Now, here we have the refresh token client. Now, let's take a look at what is exactly sort of the entirety of our request. Starting with the request data where we pass in our stuff, we have the forged request, we have the credentials that we're adding here, and then we're making the request, and we have the response here. So pretty much up to this line, this is where this whole request thing is happening, right? So let's go ahead and take this refresh token client, and let's call something similar to what we did in the home client here request client credential token async uh well logically speaking we can say something like refresh and this will request to refresh token async right so just logically thinking we want to refresh token let's type in refresh or let's search for refresh and we should find the function that already sort of does it, does this because Identity server aims to set up this infrastructure for you to make it as easy as possible. And conveniently, the object that it accepts is a refresh token request, which this is. Okay, so one by one, let's go ahead and fill these out. So first of all, what we'll need is to actually populate the refresh token. For the grant type, we can assume that the refresh token request is going to set the grant type. So let's go ahead and grab the refresh token. And set the refresh token. Cool. Next, uh, now we can get rid of this bit because we essentially set it. Uh, let's go ahead and wait on this. And uh, var, what is this return? This returns a token response. So we can store this in a token response. Okay. So next thing is we send it to the token endpoint. All right. So let's go ahead grab the address and where we can go ahead grab the discovery document and grab the token endpoint okay simple enough this is us adding the content which is this bit and setting the address and method post i'm assuming this is configured automatically here because of the name so it already knows how to request this so this part is taken care of next thing Adding this header, uh, as I mentioned before, username, password, this is kind of client specific thing. And when I say client, you have to distinguish between a user and a client. A user is something, someone who's using a browser to retrieve data from the client and that way they get pages. The client itself is the MVC client and is on the cloud, right? So what this is really is the client ID and the client secret in this uh, case. And we can go ahead and type in client ID. Uh, let's say client ID MVC, I thought it, I think it was. And uh, client secret, client uh, MVC secret. Uh, I know this is wrong. Uh, I wanna go with the wrong way first. So just in case you do meet errors in the future, we can uh, go ahead and see how we can discover these errors and fix them in the future. All right, so these two parts essentially take care of this bit because, again, this is a refresh token request. And because I expect Identity Server to set up the infrastructure for me, I expect it to know that this is what is needed to be done, right? So, again, emphasizing that point, I remove that part because these two parts take care of that. And then send async. I mean, this is pretty much it. So, let's go ahead and delete that. So you can see how that big bunch of code, we pretty much got rid of it all. And now we end up with a token response as well, where we will be able to get our access token and refresh token again. So once we refresh the access token, we're going to get a, refresh a new refresh token as well. So from here on, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. Uh, these two, we pretty much dissect the response before. We don't need to do that. Uh, again, this was sort of to get the values. We don't need to do these because it's already going to be conveniently accessed here. We still sort of do this because we want to get our... Oh, remember how to computer? Okay. All right, now we get the 
authenticate a sync, so we are getting the authentication context kind of thing. Uh, this is going to be just cookie, is it? Yeah, so just cookie. So we're going to grab this and we're going to paste this here. So we get this context and then we can grab the token response. And this was the access token. And here we can do refresh token. Okay, and this pretty much takes care of refreshing an access token. Let's go ahead and spin this up. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, not here. Let's put it here. Let's uh, call refresh access token. We don't need to pass anything to it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to put a breakpoint here just so we can take a look at the token response. And uh, yeah, just to again reemphasize, this is going to error. And I just want to show you again how to sort of investigate what error it is and how to solve it. Okay, so here, let's go to home secret. Bob, password. Okay, so here we are when we try to refresh a token. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. And it tells us invalid client. Now, this isn't really descriptive in terms of, right, it's an invalid client, but how exactly is it invalid? Now, if you are a invalid client, so let's say some guy, Mr. Bob from down the road is trying to create a C sharp client that's trying to access request tokens. I don't want to, him to know what he got wrong, right? So what you need to do is you need to go to your debugger or your logs that are outputted by your identity server. And this is where you're looking for a fail request. I'm pretty sure you can control F this part. And you would want to type in something like fail colon. And here you will be able to find a log that is basically shouting failed, right? And here the error message will be a little bit more descriptive. And it will say client secret validation failed for client, client ID MVC, right? So this is the client, client ID MVC and client secret validation has failed, right? So from here on, we can go into the configuration, we can go off, look for our client, client ID MVC, and we can take a look at that the client secret was client secret MVC. We can copy that, paste this here, and launch it again. Okay, so here we are. Let's go into home secret. Bob, password. A look at this. Okay, and now token response. And here we have pretty much everything that we want and we also have the identity token and the access token and the refresh token right so now it's not necessary but what we could also do here is refresh the id token now another cool thing we can do is to just as a sanity a sanity check we want to confirm that the access token and the id tokens are different right so let's go ahead and just copy these, paste them here. So we have the access token and ID token. And here we are basically getting them before we refresh them and reset them here. So what I want to do is essentially just say, create some dummy values and we can do it after this whole thing happened because it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna delete this code. So access token, different and here we can say something like access token equals whoa, token response access token let's copy this a few times uh, let's call this id token refresh token and let's take a look at this id token and refresh token and because i said that they're different if they equal then they are the same so it's going to return true so access token etc so basically if they're not equal they're different so i want this to return true all right so let's go ahead just so i can put a breakpoint var a equals one put a breakpoint here remove this breakpoint start this up okay up oh, password sign in Okay, so it seems like I haven't gone through the whole way uh, before. <laughs> I actually want to set cookie here as well. And also, I just noticed I have all of these as access tokens. So let's go ahead 
put this as ID token and refresh token. And let's run this again. Okay. Home secret. Bob. Whoa. Oh. And well, back here. Password. Okay, so here we are. ID token is different. Access token is different. And refresh token is different, right? So all of these are different. I mean, we can take a look at the refresh token for UR, and this one is like OIY. So this function here is essentially used primarily to refresh the access token and the refresh token. Remember that the refresh token has its own expiration time, and it's preferred that you set your refresh token again, because if your refresh token expires, you won't be able to refresh your access token, and then you will have to go and re-authenticate with the identity server. Now in this scenario, refreshing the ID token doesn't really do anything, and the ID token, I can't remember if I explained it in the previous episode, but essentially it's a little bit here for show because the primary mechanism of our authentication is the cookie. ID token is either used to retrieve the claims or then we retrieve the claims through the user information endpoint, right? Uh, it doesn't matter too much here. Uh, the primary point of this function would be to refresh the access token if it's expired when we are trying to access some kind of API and the refresh token so we can keep requesting access tokens. The ID token doesn't matter too much, right? So this will be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments section. And as always, see you in my other episodes.